Vitamin K is one of the major vitamins that exist naturally in foods. In this video, I want to talk about what vitamin K is, its roles in the body, and how to get enough of it, which means we will talk about vitamin K supplementation at the end of the video. Let's start by discussing what vitamin K is and why we need it. Vitamin K is an essential dietary nutrient, meaning we need to get it from food and cannot produce it ourselves. Even though it is often thought of as a single nutrient, there are several different types of vitamin K. The two most often found in the human diet are vitamin K1 and vitamin K2. Vitamin K1, also called phylloquinone, can be found in plant foods, such as leafy green vegetables. It makes up the bulk of all vitamin K consumed by humans. Vitamin K2, on the other hand, is found in fermented foods, animal products, and also produced by gut bacteria. There are several subtypes, called menachinones or MKs, that are named by the length of their side chain. I will talk about them in more detail in the supplement section of this video. The RDA for vitamin K is 120 microgram for adult men and 90 microgram for adult women. It has several different functions in the body. The main ones are 1. Blood clotting. This is mostly done with the help of vitamin K1, which is needed to make 4 of the 13 proteins needed for blood clotting. Our body does this naturally to stop wounds from continuously bleeding so that they can heal. People who are prescribed anticoagulants, also called blood thinners, for example, to prevent blood clots from forming in the heart, are often informed about vitamin K because it could counteract the effect of their medicine. Next, vitamin K is also important for calcium metabolism. Whereas vitamin K1 is mostly used for blood clotting, vitamin K2 plays a vital role in calcium metabolism, the foremost mineral found in bones. Vitamin K2 activates certain calcium binding proteins that are critical to building and maintaining bones. Basically, vitamin K2 directs calcium to where it's supposed to go, the bones and the teeth. Without it, you risk tissue calcification, which is a huge problem that I discuss in a different video. And third, heart health. There are also a few studies that link vitamin K to increased heart health. While it is not entirely clear how this mechanism works exactly, it would make sense that the preventative effect of vitamin K2 to tissue calcification also works in the heart and its arteries. And since narrower and less flexible arteries are linked to heart problems, avoiding these health risks through sufficient vitamin K intake is definitely important. Let's now talk about high vitamin K foods and its best sources. As I mentioned before, the foods highest in vitamin K1 include green leafy vegetables, such as collard and turnip greens, or kale, spinach, broccoli, and the like. Good sources of vitamin K2 are somewhat more scarce. Any type of grass-fed dairy will be high in K2, along with certain animal products, such as goose liver. Two interesting foods high in K2 include natto, which is a Japanese dish made of fermented soybeans, and also emu oil, which only recently has been discovered to be the highest natural source of vitamin K2. This then brings me to vitamin K supplements and whether or not they're a good idea. In general, because tissue calcification is so common, people should definitely increase their vitamin K intake. Getting plenty of vitamin K1 is done fairly easily by eating more leafy greens. Getting plenty of vitamin K2 can be a bit more tricky. Like I just said, there are very few options to get them through your diet alone. Most dairy nowadays comes from grain-fed animals, and I don't know of anyone in Europe or the US who regularly consumes natter or emu oil. So your best option would probably be to try to get quality, grass-fed, high-fed dairy products, since most of the K2 will be stored in the fat. Other pasture-raised and grass-fed animal products, such as eggs or meat, also have some K2, although in lower amounts. If eating these foods is not an option for you, you should probably supplement. There are several different subgroups of vitamin K2, with the MK4 and MK7 forms being the most widely studied. Most vitamin K2 supplements use the MK7 form. 
The reason for this is that studies have shown that MK7, unlike MK4, remains elevated in the blood after ingestion for several hours. This is seen as proof of its longer lasting effect. Also, MK7 can generally be converted into MK4 by the body. This is why most companies see it as superior to MK4 and use it in their products. You will also see most resources online recommending it as the go-to type. I still want to highlight a few benefits of MK4 though, because I believe it is being underrepresented in the current discussion. First, MK4 is the most common vitamin K2 form in most animals, not MK7. Also, MK4 is the predominant form of vitamin K in the brain, supporting brain and nerve function, not MK7. The fact that MK7 remains elevated in the blood longer than MK4 could also mean that it is less efficiently absorbed by the tissue. We really don't know. And we assume the conversion of MK7 to MK4 works flawlessly in everyone. However, genetics, cofactors, and stress levels most certainly play a role here. So why not consume the predominant form in the body, which is MK4, directly? These are just some ideas though, because unfortunately we still know very little about both MK7 and MK4. So your best bet is to try both and see if you notice a difference. Your average vitamin K2 MK7 supplement will come in doses from 50 to 200 micrograms, whereas vitamin K2 MK4 supplements usually have a higher dose, ranging from 500 micrograms all the way up to several milligram. As I said in my other videos on fat-soluble vitamins, I'm not a big fan of superdosing fat-soluble vitamins in supplemental form because they can accumulate in the body over time and crowd out other antagonist vitamins. While studies with vitamin K have not shown toxicity associated with high doses, I would still try to stay on the safe side because these effects might only occur after months or even years. So as always, start with a low dose of a vitamin K supplement and see how your body reacts to it. 